Good evening, everyone. I hope everyone's having a fantastic evening. How is everyone tonight? So, <clears throat> we're back in the Plutonia Wad. It's Doom Mod Monday. Welcome. I know that. Uh, oh, hello, Loser Corner. How are you doing? Fantastic. I'm glad you're having a great day. Even though it seems like every day you're having a great day. <laughs> I'd be terrified, terrified of the day that I come in here and you say hello and you don't say you're having a great day. I'd be terrified. I'd be like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> what do I need to do? How do we make this better? <laughs> but anyway, glad you're here. Um, so we're back to the Plutonia Wad. Uh, I'm on map 25, so we're on the home stretch. Uh, so, no point having a big old intro, let's just hop back into it. Now, um, so it's been a week. I don't quite remember exactly <laughs> what I was doing. So we're 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 gonna figure this out together, guys. Oh, uh, actually, I think I remember something about this now. I think I remember coming through here and regretting every decision I've ever made in my life that led up to this moment. Because now I got. Well, especially now what I've done. I might have pain elementals coming on one side, revenants on the other. Oh, yeah, I do. Look. No, get rid of it. Like, at the very least, at the very least, I can say that after finishing... Doom 64, that pain elementals in this game, despite being absolutely terrible inventions, are in fact less of a pain in my ass uh, than the Doom 64 pain elementals. Those things, those things were a special breed, man, all on their own. Yeah. Oh, I was close, just close enough to get those. No, okay, no, still a party down there. How you guys doing? Everything's up here is good. No, okay. Yeah, so this is a level I apparently started last time, and now I'm not entirely certain what I've done so far in this level. But I have a feeling I've been through this teleporter and I've regretted it immensely. Hmm. Hey Jay, how you doing? Opened up with the question of the day, I like it, I like it. So yeah, I know you've played a few Doom Wads in your day. Which one, if you have a favorite that is, which one would you say is your favorite or one of the most enjoyable ones that you've played? Okay, that one just brings me back up here. And that's the second level, right? Perfect Hatred? I feel like that's the second level. I think the second level is actually pretty good too, because it's kind of like... You have the ammo to kill everything without it being an absolute pain in your, abs in your ass, like the first level. Oh, god damn it, what did I just open? Eh, it's not terrible. What does that do? 
Oh, it's making that rise so I can get to them. Fantastic. But yeah, so the map 2 like has the ammo, has everything I need to technically finish the, the level. Uh, which is great. Uh, and doesn't make ammo as big a deal, but... But... It is still a very challenging wad. And I think that's... Where... Oh, shoot. <laughs> And I think that's where a lot of, like, the original Doom and Doom 2 wads kind of, like, have an issue where I believe people or, or even the designers thought the only real challenge was to limit ammo, right? Because I've I recently, not too long ago, watched a couple people play Doom and Doom 2 for the first time. And I've quickly realized just how difficult the game can be, A, if you don't strafe. And B, if you don't look for secrets and get all the ammo, because there is a bit of a scar scarcity problem when it comes to ammo if you don't get all your secrets. So I think Perfect Hatred shows that a lack of ammo is not necessary to uh, make a level difficult. It's difficult just by how the level's structured, where everything is in the level, the challenge right at the beginning. There, there's a lot of challenge in in Perfect Hatred, and they didn't need to make it impossible to find all the ammo in order to make it make that happen. Right? I always remember when I was younger, I was really partial to like O of Destruction or Circle of Death, depending on which name you give it. In Doom 2, but I think that was just because I really liked the name. Okay, so that opened up that. So what's down here? Oh, okay. Okay, so that was a bad idea on my part. Alright, hang on. Now, the first level of life, flesh consumed when it comes to ammo, health, etc. Yeah, but I think, like, the, the first level of life, flesh consume almost went too much in the other direction, where it was like, let's make sure he has, like, zero ammo by the end of it. Okay, hello, everyone. How you doing? Right, and I, when I look at, you know, wads like the alien wad... Oh, Jesus. I have really just completely ruined that soul sphere I picked up earlier. Yeah, when I when I think of, like, the alien TC wad, like, animal scarcity was definitely a problem there. And I think the only reason why that needed that animal scarcity was because the enemies he was creating, which had to be based off of, like, the regular old demons and... Stuff like that in the... Why did I do that? Uh, in the game, and imps didn't have a lot of moves to... And since they didn't have a lot of health, didn't have a lot of challenge to them to defeat, he basically had to make it that... Uh, a lack of ammo was where the challenge came from. Which is a shame, because I actually really like the third level, or second real level, I guess you could say, of the uh, Alien TC wad because you're just getting, like, aliens coming at you left, right, and center. They're literally everywhere. And it creates a really, like, hectic sort of moment in the in the whole Megawad um, that isn't replicated otherwise, right? Okay, now I hear breathing. Or I think I hear breathing. I do, but where's it coming from? Um. Okay then. That's fine. 
You know, is there any health lying around I can pick up, or is that going to be pretty much it? No? Alright. I think I got everything except for maybe I don't have all the items. Yeah, who cares? Bunker. Like, I always actually thought when it came to my favorite wad, for the longest time, I thought Alien Conversion was probably one of the best wads I played. And then I recently replayed it, and I was like, this isn't actually that good. <laughs> I think I just, I was really looking at it through rose-tinted glasses, because I love the graphical updates the wad made. And then I, now I look back, and I'm like, this level design actually wasn't very good. He really was a one-trick pony when he created that wad. But you see, at the same time, I've never played, say, like, the Memento Mori Megawatt all the way through. And that's one I remember my dad really loved. He loved the Memento Mori Wad. I sound like someone playing Daysex again. <laughs> well, I thought the whole thing with Daysex wasn't so much that the level design was garbage. I actually thought the level design was pretty good. It's just the game just legitimately looks like ass. <laughs> and like, I was struggling for the longest time to like, is it just because of the year it came out? Maybe other games that year looked that kind of, that much like ass. And, but like, I don't remember ever playing a game that I thought was like, ugh. And I can't even explain why it looks so much like ass. Like, I can't even really put my finger on it. Because, yeah, it's like early 3D polygonal models, but, I mean, weren't, uh, you know, the PlayStation was early polygonal models, and it looked less garbage than Daysex did. <laughs> so I literally have no idea what, what, I can't put my finger on it. I mean, I know why the voice acting sucked, that's, that's pretty easy. Then. But I thought the gameplay of Daysex held up fine. Obviously a few things here and there that were a little funky or had weird triggers to them, but overall I thought the, great, the game actually played very well. I think it's just when people go back and play it after not playing it for years ago. Jeez, did it always look this bad? I don't remember it looking this bad. <laughs> or sounding this bad. <laughs> Seriously, what is this voice acting? <laughs> Man, this bunker's got an awful lot of, like... ...underground river thing going on here. So honestly, I can't even say anymore what I think like my favorite like wad is, but uh, I can say that Brutal Doom is probably my favorite total conversion or of uh, the game. Like the violence, like is so reminiscent in Brutal Doom as to what Doom 2016 is now, like stylized over the top and like non serious violence that you almost can't help but enjoy yourself playing it. Or at least, that's what I experienced. So when do I get to go- Oh, okay! Uh, Plutonia again with its uh, copious amount of arch files. How are you not dead yet? How are you not dead yet? Oh my god, how are you not dead yet? <laughs> I know I wasn't getting, like, much in the way of, like, direct hits on him, but Christ. <laughs> like, I know I hit him, like, well, at least, like, five times there. See, like, I know I hit him that time because he went back. Nah, I need to move him. I 
I think if there actually was a game, actually, I don't even know if there's a lot of games anyway that I remember loving as a child. And then replaying and being like, actually, this is kind of garbage. I don't know why I like this. I actually don't know if that's happened to me. But then again, I guess there's only so many games I've played that I've ever actually could really say that I've loved to the point that I'd be super disappointed if I replayed it and it actually sucked. Okay, I'm glad I killed them then because that would have sucked if he resurrected the Arch or the uh, Arachnotron. Like, for example, I love Mega Man X. But luckily I've replayed Mega Man X not too long ago and the game's fine. I mean, like, do I love it still? Probably not, I mean... Yeah, but you see, I didn't really love Double Dragon, but I only played it one or two times back then, and I was so young that I literally just blew at it. So it's not even like I can say, like, oh, I got so far and enjoyed it. It just... I never got anywhere with it, so I was... It's kind of hard to say I loved it. When do I get out of this underground? Like... Christ, guys. Like, do I remember it being better than what we ended up, than, like, it actually was? I mean, yes, but I think I felt that way about a lot of NES games. I think I felt a lot of NES games were better than they, you know, actually were. Um... And some of them, like, still hold up, but I mean, like, I'll play, like, say, the original Final Fantasy. And the original Final Fantasy definitely had some good elements, especially when you consider how old it was, right? But Final Fantasy 1 is also buggy as shit, apparently, I found out when I did a recent replay. When I got the NES Classic, I actually played Final Fantasy 1 all the way through. Which I don't think I had done before. I would started it and never finished it. So I got... I played through that and I was like, this game's actually buggy as frig. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto 1? Again, like, I I don't think I've ever actually played Grand Theft Auto 1. Like, I played 2 a bunch on the PC. Yeah, but wasn't Grand Theft Auto 1 on the Game Boy or something as well? Because I know I played Grand Theft Auto 2 a bunch on the PC, but I don't remember playing Grand Theft Auto 1 very much. Okay, seriously, I'm just going in circles now. Mm. Yeah, and that might have been one of the things, too. It allowed you to save, which was a big step up from the PC. <laughs> yeah, I remember Grand Theft Auto 1 being, like, on the Game Boy that when we owned it. And I actually don't remember. Is that actually what it was originally for? I feel like it wasn't. Okay, seriously, how do I... How do I get out of here? Um... Okay, it was originally for the PC, okay. That makes more sense to me. I really didn't see Grand Theft Auto 1 being a... a Game Boy game. That would have been... That seemed weird. He couldn't save during missions. Well, yeah, and the piece... I remember with the Grand Theft Auto 2, it was something like you had to, um... You had to go to a hospital or something to save your game. Something like that. Which meant you couldn't really do it during missions, and it cost you some... Oh, church. That's what it was, church. And it was always something stupid, like it was $50,000... Like, it wasn't a small amount. It was, like, a stupid amount of money to save your game. And you're just sitting there like, but why, though? <laughs> Actually, no, it wasn't 50000 It was, like, 5000 I think that's a better number. But still, like, when you first start the game, it takes you a little bit to get 5000 right? So it's, like... I wanted to save my game after the first mission, but I didn't make enough money yet to save my game. <clears throat> I 
But yeah, and what other games I love? Like, I loved Super Mario RPG growing up. Replayed Super Mario RPG, still loved it. In fact, I can actually appreciate some things in Super Mario RPG now, now like, more than I did when I first played it. There's actually some really good design decisions in, in Super Mario RPG. So I can actually say with a lot of confidence that it actually aged better for me than... Screw all you. Than it, than it was when I was younger. But I think, like, other than that, there's not too many games I can really look back on and be like, Oh, I absolutely love that game. Everything about that game was great and I loved it or anything like that. Except, <laughs> except maybe Godzilla for the NES. But that was for a whole different set of reasons. That was just because it was a Godzilla game. Godzilla raised me more than, my, than our parents did. Hello, hell nice. I mean, I know it's not a great game, and I don't care. <laughs> like, I got to play as Godzilla, I was good. I mean, Godzilla 2 for the NES, now that was a garbage game. Because not only were the mechanics, like, nonsensical, you didn't even get to play as Godzilla, so what even was the point? Let's see what I need to just to get out of this room. I think one of the funny things I remember is like saying like loving Duck Hunt. And when you look back, it's like, Duck Hunt is actually not a good game. It's just the novelty of the Zapper Gun, right? That makes it so... That made it fun to play. Because you do that with any other medium. A mouse click, a controller. It's not fun. It's, it's because you were using something shaped like a gun. To shoot things on a screen. That was quite the novelty item. As a result, so... I guess that's an example of looking back on something and being like, actually, this wasn't very good. <laughs> but I think that's something we quickly realize as we get older and we look back at games, like the design philosophy back then was so different. And that was partially because they wanted to make their games hard so that you had to rent them more than once. <laughs> I remember that being the... Uh, the joke with a lot of the Disney based uh, like SNES games like Aladdin and Lion King they were like legitimately brutal but the reason why was so that you would have to rent it more than once in order to beat it and the funny thing is I think I beat both of those games through rentals <laughs> So this is not really a teleporter. It's a lie. All right. Okay. Hi. I guess it was a teleporter after all, just not for me. Oh, there's four of them. I feel like this was a door a second ago. Okay. Okay, what have I done? Because now we hear a whole bunch of things teleporting. And I'm, not, I'm no longer comfortable with what's happening here. Hello? 
Okay, well, it wasn't you guys. Thankfully. Well, Jay, since we're on the topic, what do you think was one of your favorite uh, games from when we were younger? Like, what game do you look back on and go, like, that was my favorite? And it doesn't have to be your... F shoot. It doesn't need to be your favorite anymore, but what was your favorite back then? Okay, that is not a way out. <laughs> I thought that was a way out, it was not. <laughs> okay, so that is how I was meant to go Pookie. Alright. Ugh. Alright, so might as well get health up knowing the what Fuffle awaits me up there. I guess I can look out here just to just to see first. No, nope, that is uh, not good. It's interesting how prevalent crushing ceilings are in like the first two Doom games, but Doom sixty four took. For the most part, a pass on crushing ceilings. Okay, that's a damaging floor. You don't know it's a damaging floor until it's too late, but that's a damaging floor. Oh, I started playing it and then I didn't get to finish Shoking Carrot. I'm sorry. I started playing it at, uh... I'm break at work, and I remember someone saying it was like, "Oh Jesus, the uh... okay, no, I don't want that." If you're coming by yourself, it's like a squid rap, is it not? <laughs> yeah, I started playing it at work in a, a, during my break. And, uh, then I got called away because, of course, you don't actually get a break at work these days. I'll give it a full listen later. Oh, jeez, hello. I'm trying to decide if it's a wrap. Is it going to be just silly enough to be one of ours, but not so silly that people are like, what the F is wrong with you guys? Although I have no problem letting people think that we are very weird, because I'm certainly not what many people call normal. Okay, so I got one secret. There's a revenant humming around somewhere here. Squid! Squid gang! Woo! Squid gang, squid gang. Okay, I'm hearing revenants here. Okay, so that doesn't actually do anything. And how do I open that? Can I open that? Yes, I can. But how do I open that? Hmm. Squid gang, squid gang. Oh, Jesus, hello. You guys were not here before. You're all new people that have shown up specifically to mess with me, I guess. Oh, God, okay. Yeah, you can hear it. Also, I, I I believe you originally found me through a Doom stream, so were you looking through the Doom category at the time when you found me? 
Is Doom your uh, bread and butter? So yeah, can you think of one? You got a you got a favorite? It doesn't even need to be a a, a wad or anything like that, uh, or full blown megawad. My brother used the example of he really likes level two of uh, buy flesh consume. That that's his favorite. So it can be just a level. It can be a mod. Whatever you want. What what Doom related level experience? Could you look back and go, well, like, yeah, I, I really like that wad. I think it's one of my favorites to go back and play type deal. Oh, nope, that's still not everything. Jeez, where's this going to bring me? Ultimate Doom. Isn't Ultimate Doom just like, uh... Like, E1... E1, M1 all the way to E4, M9 or whatever? If that is your favorite, well, power to you. Just double-checking that that is, in fact, the case. Or are you just blanking on the name right now? Is it like a megawad, like a full 32, or is it like a doom mod? Let's see if we can narrow this down a little bit. We'll figure this out. We'll figure this out together, Yoke and Carrot. Mega Brutal Doom. There's a Mega Brutal Doom. I know of a Brutal Doom, but Jesus, that's... Given how violent Brutal Doom makes the game, that, that'd that be crazy if there was two of them. Or a, or a more crazy version. That'd be nuts. So hang on, this wasn't a secret. Really? Ugh. Like, I found one secret, and in the end I'd be content with that, but I feel like... Brutal Doom, you can aim down the sights with some weapons, but you definitely can't drive a mech. That is not what Brutal Doom allows you to do. Brutal Doom is just something that just hyper inflates the violence and gives you like glory kills like Doom 2016 does. But no, it certainly doesn't give. Oh, hello. How do I make you guys come down? Okay, that's a bit of a lame secret, but all right. Okay, so it is Brutal Doom. Like I said, the only thing um, is you can't ride a mech in that. I think that's something else. But I was actually saying I think Brutal Doom is probably one of my favorites as well, actually. Nothing kind of reinvigorated my desire to play through the original Doom series quite like discovering Brutal Doom. And the creator even did make a, uh, a really cool little um, starter pack, I think he called it, to go along with it. Which was also really good. Oh, in that particular level. Oh, you're talking... So if you're talking about Brutal Doom, you're talking about uh, the starter pack he made.
Because there is actually, I do believe there's a level in the starter pack where you can drive a mech. Yeah, everything except for the mech is throwing me off. Or no, nothing but the mech is throwing me off. Because everything you're descri describing is Brutal Doom. Yeah, Brutal Doom. It's all Brutal Doom. Seriously, what am I missing? Okay, actually, I think I know where the last secret is, but I need to backtrack to get there. And then separately need to remember how to get out of here. <laughs> so that's this way. Okay, so this door is the problem. I need to figure out a way to make that door open. I feel that's what's holding me back right now. But that is definitely the, the, the secret I'm missing. Uh, on a separate note, Yoke and Carrot, uh, Jay and I were discussing um, games we played when we were younger that we went back and played. And, like, when we were older and then discovered, like, the game actually wasn't that good. <laughs> Do you ever have that kind of experience, or is that unique to me? Skylanders. Can't say I ever played it, but I guess that I was not the target audience by the time that came out. Fiend Frenzy. Is that a video game or is that like a board game? Okay, so those aren't real doors. Is it a video game? Okay. Well, I haven't heard of it, which is probably... <laughs> I really want to figure out how to open that door. M plus, the new one's not that good. Okay, so you were able to rattle off three right off the bat. I'm guessing this is something that actually has commonly happened to you. You just go back and play something you're like, this is actually so very good. So what do I do to open that door? Any Lego game? I thought the Lego game still had... I haven't really played them, so you can correct me if I'm wrong. But I thought the Lego game still had this, like, charm to them because of their inherent silliness. Like, they knew they were being silly and they were okay with it. And sometimes when a game is uh, willing to be a little bit silly, you just kind of like, oh, it's funny, it's fine. Okay, why was I some? Why do I suddenly have the ability to see inside there? Hmm. Was there something over there? <coughs> Well, if this is a switch that opens the door, I need to stop being a dumbass about it. No, that's not it either. Okay, no. So that switch doesn't do anything either. How do I open that door? I might be chasing a ghost, but 
for some reason I have to run in through here. I was like suddenly able to uh, see the inside, so let's see here. I try and run over the blue key spot one more time because that's pretty much where. Uh... No, okay. I made this jump once before. Now it's not gonna let me do it again, huh? There we go. Probably Doom 2016. Honestly, my stepdad let me watch him play it when he came out, and that was my favorite game. But now it's not my fave anymore. So what is your fate? Do you definitively have a fave now? Did any of those do anything? Pretty sure I'm grasping at straws here now. Eh, uh, screw it. I'm not gonna spend another like 40 minutes doing this. It's just gonna be another secret that the uh, creators got one up on me over. I wanna let them have it. Antichrist! Jesus, okay. We're getting heavy here now. Oh, come on. A chain gunner right off the bat? A pain elemental right off the bat? I heard it. Okay, I gotta get off of here. This is... Man, oh man, this level is... not messing around. Why are they able to outrange me so easily? You like Destiny 2, OG Doom, and of course Terraria will always be my OG, so will Minecraft. I actually think Minecraft is going to be one of those games that a lot of people are going to look back on and be like, that will be Oh, okay! Okay, they're not they're not gonna look back and go, oh gee, okay, but you know <laughs> They're gonna look back and say like oh that was probably the first time I was playing games like readily. Unfortunately there's gonna be an equal number of like younger generation gamers that are gonna say the same about Fortnite, so Because I will never be able to get over how popular Fortnite apparently, or at least was. Gotta get in the shower, give them hell. I will give them hell for you, Yoking Carrot. Thanks for stopping in. I much appreciate you every time you show up. Okay, I actually can see. <laughs> You've never played Fortnite? Oh, well, I haven't either, actually. I mean, I do have, like, this morbid curiosity in one sense, because I've... I've... It was so popular. I'm a... Okay, I'm back here. Okay. I'm sorry, Jesus. Yeah, because uh, I've never actually, I've never played Fortnite either, but, like, there's a morbid curiosity because of how popular. I don't know if it's still popular, or it's just less popular than it was, but it was extremely popular for quite a long period of time. There was even teachers on Reddit, I remember, telling stories about how, like, Fortnite was actually uh, getting his kid, his, the kids in his class to bond in ways that, like, nothing else he had ever seen was doing it. Because they would bond over, oh, what skins do we have? Or what what, it, what do you think is going to happen in the most current, the next season? And, and things like that. There was, it was like a great equalizer amongst 
you know, the younger generation. It did have some problems associated with it, like, um, it was actually apparently a very prominent reason to bully somebody if they didn't have, if all they had was basic st skins. So there was actually, again, other teachers saying about, well, that was embarrassing. There's a bunch of teachers talking about how there were instances of bullying increasing because, like, there were certain kids that, like, obviously didn't have premium Fortnite skins, right? Now, to someone like me, I'd be like, who gives a crap, all right, if some kids are like, oh, you have the basic skins, blue. Right, but to a Jesus. Maybe I really shouldn't be using the rocket launcher as much. I can't be trusted with it. But apparently, there's a whole bunch of kids that would like bully you, and then it was causing kids to like beg their parents, like, "Dad, I, Mom, I really need some of those uh, V bucks. I think they were to get a few Fortnite skins, so I get bullied less at school." Right, like. <laughs> I was never, you were never good at multiplayer games? I can see that, but I, th I, I was never really much into going through random portals in, a, in the Plutonia wad has not worked out very well for me, so I don't know why I just did that. Um, I'm not a, like, really good at, uh, multiplayer games either. I was never really good at multiplayer games either, but I think it's for... <laughs> ah! uh, okay, well, I was just unlucky there because the uh, chain gunner was being protected by the Mancubi. Um, But my problem with the multiplayer games is... I just don't like the people that play multiplayer. Jesus! I just like don't like the people that play multiplayer games. Honestly. <laughs> Cause I mean like when I play a multiplayer game, uh, competitive game, my, my, my prime, are you still alive? Why aren't you dead? Jesus. Christ almighty. But my primary game whenever I'm playing a multiplayer game is just to, you know, have a little bit of fun, test my skills out. Okay, you must be being resurrected or something. Oh, another one of those freaking archvile towers. I got myself back into a corner very badly here. So yeah, when I play multiplayer games, I'm just looking to have a little bit of fun, test my skills out. And unfortunately, the people that play multiplayer games, like, very readily, just tend to suck <laughs> as human beings. Like, they're the people that, like, rage at you if you don't use a strategy they deem as appropriate, right? Or they constantly use, like, cheap-ass tactics just so they can increase their, like, win-loss rating. Or they make fun of you if you lose. Like, uh -huh, I beat you, nerd. <laughs> right, that kind of attitude... Real okay. That kind of attitude ticks me off, and unfortunately, that's like the general plane, the general attitude of a lot of people who. Pl Again, I don't know why I killed it. I know what the result was going to be. 
Okay, so what do we do now, though? We're kind of like... Uh, maybe this will help. Like, I remember I played... Uh, I played StarCraft 2 with my younger brother a lot, and like we did a couple of co-op games, and we did a different sort of tactic that, uh, where one of us only went ground and one of us only went air units. So, my, uh, my brother went air units only, which also meant that, uh, which also meant that he, uh, was using Whoa crap. Whew. My brother was using a tactic that is usually not like acceptable per se. Uh because usually like when you play a game like StarCraft 2 the whole thing is, oh, well, I play and do ground units at first. Uh, maybe there's some other, like, alternative tactics you can do, but you, you do ground units and, you know, things like that before going on to, like, the heavier air units and everything. But since we were doing the strat where I only did ground and he only did air, he had air units really early and they didn't counteract it because they didn't think he was going to do it or didn't know he was doing it. And they got mad at us. Like, legitimately angry. Oops. Like... And, like, we're swearing at us and everything for using this strat they didn't deem appropriate. I don't know. <laughs> oh, God. Where's the pain elemental? You. You. Die. Die, 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 die. I don't have time for your nonsense. I hate having vulnerability when I'm fighting enemies and throw fireballs, because now the fireballs are unpredictable and I have no idea where they're going. Okay, but I, I believe I'm okay now. I, I appear to be okay. Mm, I am less okay now. How do I get rid of you? How do I how do I get rid of you? Alright, well that was sad. Okay, and I find my <laughs> Okay, I'm being an idiot here. <laughs> and then that's the kind of thing. I don't have time for people that are gonna play the game that way with like anger and <sighs> right which is also one of the reasons why I never got into like team games like Dota or League because especially where you end up playing with what well, I did that on my first try why am I having trouble with it all of a sudden right so I'd be playing League you could play League but like everybody's notoriously hateful of playing League right and they get so angry at people who make mistakes so it's kind of like, if you're not going to make your game welcoming for new players, I don't... I don't really want to be part of your community. Jesus! Okay. I circle straight successfully to dodge a rocket and shove it into something else. I am showing off my my circuit strafing skills. Woo! Did it? So in summary, like I'm not really good at multiplayer games either, but I think it's because I don't have the patience for a lot of them to really put the time in to get good at them. Okay, what does that do? Jake Pollers, I'm back. Squid Gang, not Jake Pollers. Please don't associate me with the Paul Brothers. 
the lowest form of entertainment. <laughs> That's kind of cruel, though. I actually, like, don't care if people like the Palm Brothers, honestly. If that, if that's... I'm stuck in the corner. I'm stuck in the corner. I'm stuck in the corner. I mean, if that's what people find entertaining, I shouldn't, like, criticize them for it, if that's what they like watching, but... It's not a comedy act that I would associate myself with. Squid Gang! <laughs> Squid gang, squid gang. Okay, I'm running low on uh... Fine. <laughs> like I said, I don't actually care. <laughs> to make that less bad than it could have been. Which, frankly, in the Plutonium Wad is exactly what I need. Less bad than it could have been. God, I hate the rockets so much. Well, actually, with that said, Yoke and Carrot, is there a particular, like, YouTube series or, or anything that you do enjoy watching? I can't believe you were a boss of two Ultimate Doom episodes. You suck. And by that thing sucking, I actually mean that the guys who developed it, kind of dropped the ball on the BFG. They really had no one to play but themselves. <laughs> okay, so that's a secret, I'm sure. But does that not get rid of the arch file thing up here? I, like, splash damage the earth file. You like commentators and, of course, Squid Gang? Well, of course, I'm obviously partial to the Squid Gang myself. Like, obviously. <laughs> okay, I gotta find my way back. I think I know where the other secret is. Or at least one of them. But, I don't know how I'm supposed to get rid of... Oops. I understand how I'm supposed to get rid of that, uh, chain gun archvile combo up there. Oh, come on! That was, like, perfect. Had it though. So, is there no way to actually get one hundred percent kills? Because I haven't figured out a way to get rid of that arch file thing. Last time they had an archfile tower type deal going on, they simply um, uh, 
they simply just, when I got to the end of the level, just made a crusher kill it or something. How am I meant to deal with this? I don't understand, I'm ignorant. Now I can't even remember my way back to the level. <laughs> I'm so lost! And can't do the most basic of jumps either, so... Yeah, I, I don't know what to do to deal with it, so... I guess we're just not gonna deal with it. <laughs> Your Doom guy has a new weapon, he has a super shotgun, chain gun, plasma gun, and a brand new rocket launcher. That is awesome, man. You are going above... Uh, I hit the wrong button. You are going above and beyond with this uh, Doom guy, and I am loving it. I, I've, I've really enjoyed seeing your work on it. It's been a lot of fun watching it. So thank you, especially for making one in my honor. The Sewers. the sewers will have a whole bunch of enemies in it, because why the heck not? So Young Care, when you say commentators, you're talking about like YouTube commentators, talking about video games, or are they like commenting on like political situations, or... YouTube drama. What kind of commentating are you into? No judgment here. Don't be afraid to tell me. Because I'm sure I've watched a bunch of YouTube videos or creators that would make people go. Really? Seriously? Now you can see why he can't jump. I mean, that would be a good explanation why he can't jump. Because he's literally carrying too much. I mean, I don't know, were you, uh, Loser Corner, have you ever, like, watched any, like, Mythbusters or anything? You, uh, you a Mythbusters watcher like I was when I was younger? Or, you know, when they were, like, still making episodes? I feel like I should be able to get this. <laughs> There we go. And you'll make the, finally make the BFG 9000? Awesome. That's what I like to hear. But, um... But, yeah, so... In the later... Years of Mythbusters, they actually did an episode... Um... Area maps already. Why'd you give me two? Huh. Um. I like the people who make fun of drama. Also, what I watched on died, so I went for like one minute, and also I had to spoil my dogs before. <laughs> Don't worry. Even if you didn't show back up, I wouldn't have been offended. Uh, but yeah, in the later years of Mythbusters, they actually did an episode that examined... Oh, so you did see that, the, uh... And, like, it's, it's, it's funny how they're like, okay, so the problem with us doing this was we're out of shape compared to this UFC fighter guy. But I feel like the other thing, too, the UFC fighter guy in that episode knew he was on a timer, I guess... And he wasn't in any physical danger. I feel like in any any like real life situation, no guy would try doing what uh, that UFC dude did. That would not. I don't think anybody would have tried it because they'd be like, "Well, carrying all this is going to put me in a lot of a lot of danger here." Even if he was physically capable of carrying that load, I still think he'd be like, you know, I'm physically capable of it, but... 
you wish the two dudes actually liked each other so they would keep making Mythbusters? Um, I'm not entirely sure, so take this with a bit of a grain of salt. But I actually don't think they ended Mythbusters simply because they didn't like each other. Um, because what, like, Adam Savage said at one point was, uh, even though they don't like each other on any personal level, working together was still kind of fun because they worked so well together despite the fact they didn't like each other. So Adam would use examples of how, like, he could just use hand singles and, and Jamie would be like, yeah, I, I got you, I understand. And the two of them always said there was two things that made it possible for them to work together despite not liking each other on a personal level. And one was, uh... Neither of them had a huge ego. So if one person... Ooh, hello, gun storage room. So even if one person, like, they always trusted that they would come to the same conclusion about what the best idea was. So... If Jamie had a good idea, Adam would be like, okay, yeah, you're right, that's a good idea, and vice versa. And second, they always agreed on the direction they wanted the show to go. I think the main problem as to why Mythbusters ended was for two reasons. One, they were running out of myths. <laughs> like, they were just straight up running out of myths. I can see your head. I feel like I should be able to aim at you. Um... And the second reason was ratings were starting to dip, either way. Um, and that might be partially because, you know, Mythbusters uh, was running out of myths, so sometimes their myths were getting more and more ridiculous as time went on. Okay, so what, what the heck was the point of letting me take that down? Um... And it's the same thing with another Discovery show, Dirty Jobs, right? Dirty Jobs was another show that uh, I watched frequently and my wife really liked it. Um, use the RPG? Hmm. I guess I could do that, but I can't go back now, can I? I'm stuck here. Okay, if I go back, I'll figure it out. So, okay, well, looks like I'm using something here. <laughs> Yeah, but my wife really liked the show Dirty Jobs, but Dirty Jobs was, again, another show that was completely reliant on people sending in, um, on people sending in suggestions of jobs for them to do, right? So they really were relying on, like, people saying, like, hey, I know this job you could go look at. And so at the end of every episode of Dirty Jobs, Mike Rowe would come on and be like, Listen, guys, I need you to keep sending me suggestions so that we can go film. Son of a bitch, Archfile. No, 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 don't go out there. Bad Archfile. Infinite splash damage. Yeah, it's true, but I, I, felt, I think I felt like I was too close that if I used it, I would have been in danger. Um... Okay, there they are. <laughs> but yeah, so Mike Rowe would get at the end of every episode, like, guys, give us suggestions. But sooner or later, they were going to run out of dirty jobs that he could look at. It wasn't like they were inventing new dirty jobs uh, at the same rate that they were filming them, especially when there were, like, episodes where he did three dirty jobs in one episode. So, given that being the case, he really... Uh, they were going to run out eventually, and I do believe that was part of the reason that the show got cancelled. Eventually. So I think Mythbusters had the same problem. They were running out of, uh, they were just plain running out of things to test. Uh, I remember they did a, um, oh, uh, what was it? The Underworld. Seen in the movie Underworld, where uh, Kate Beckinsale, like, is she stuck in a corner or something? So she starts shooting the floor in a circle around her, and the floor collapses underneath her, and that's how she escapes. And they they felt that like, okay, let's test that. And I'm like, there is no way that's going to work. I can tell you with a hundred percent certainty that that's not going to work, especially with pistols. Like if she yanked out like a midi gun and it's like, Nyeh! maybe. Maybe that would get her through. But she's not doing it with a couple of pistols. 
Don't bullshit me. <laughs> so when they start doing episodes like that, I think, uh... <laughs> I think that's when you go like, all right, guys. Like, I think you're going a little, a little too far now. <laughs> and that's not saying I didn't like a few silly episodes every now and then. They did, they did an episode where they were testing like, could you create a slingshot powerful enough to launch somebody over the American border into Canada? <laughs> and it's like one of those questions where it's like, yes, but they won't survive. <laughs> And, like, that was a silly thing to test, but, like, it was hilarious enough that I didn't care. Right? But shooting through the floor is not hilarious. That's just dumb. Yeah, they were getting a little bit desperate, exactly. So, like, while I was happy to see them do something like the Doom episode, because that is something they can kind of test a little bit. Because one of the points they made during that episode was, yeah, I'm running away from... You know, uh, like these enemies in real life, and like, yes, I'm only picking up a gun as I find it and not trying to carry them all at one time. But they felt like, well, I won't go any faster because I, I'm not, I have to be tactical, right? So even though I'm not burning down by weight, I can't just run willy nilly through this level. I have to be careful. I gotta, like, aim and pick my shots properly. But when you get to. And that's why I thought it was really funny, because when the big guy did it, he wasn't being tactical. He was just like, nier, 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 nier. right? He'd run through with his Nerf gun, shoot a zombie in the dick, and then just keep running, right? No tacticalness whatsoever, because I think he knew he was on a time limit, and he wanted to prove he could do it just as fast with carrying the rocket launchers or whatever it was they said he was carrying. Oops. Okay, try this again. Get up there. Ugh. All right. Alright, I don't know what that opened, and I bet it's gonna hurt when I go in there. That was more like I was expecting. I'm like, there's no way that's the only thing in there. <laughs> right, but they did say that they definitely went slower trying to carry everything, but they said it also took the fun out of it. Because <laughs> they were like, man, after experiencing what it's like to like do a real-life Doom level, they were like, I'd pay money to do this. Pretend to be like the Doom guy and go through these levels being all tactical and shit. I'd pay money. And I honestly think I probably would too. That, it sounds like a lot of fun. It's like paintball, but I can't lose. So I would probably would enjoy uh, doing that as well. Obviously not carrying pounds upon pounds of guns on me, but because I... Do I look like I even live, bro? <laughs> but like the pick up one each weapon as you find it type deal? That sounds like a lot of fun. I'm sorry, Yoke and Carrot. I went on like a huge tangent. I'm sorry. I am just was really passionate about the Mythbusters, so I think I just look for excuses to talk about them. They were They were a lot of fun to me. Even though I know that what they were doing was okay. I did not know they were there. Even though I know what they were doing was not pure science. Like, it was like meatball science. I still love watching it. Okay, I am done. But I do think Mythbusters is probably one of the best shows that Discovery ever had. So it is kind of a shame that looking back now, they can't have more shows like that. You know, I'm making a Geometry Dash level watching you, so I mean, I'm doing the same. Okay, no problem. So, how long does it take to do a ge Geometry Dash level? Because I always see, like, these games where people make levels, like, even, like, uh, Happy Wheels back in the day, and I'm like... How long does it take to put one of these things together? Because I've never tried doing, like, those those types of uh, map level making, right? Surprising thing is it was still better than the Doom movie. <laughs> 
That's like being a five-year-old at arm wrestling, though. Like, yeah, it's great to walk away with a win, but I mean, I, I can't really brag about beating the Doom movie. Video game movies just don't translate well to screen. They just really don't. Which is a shame, because there's certain games where I thought, like, this one is going to make it. Like, this one is going to finally break that, uh... That stigma of video game movies, and it just doesn't. I was so confident in Max Payne. This took you like four hours and you're not done? Doesn't seem too bad, though. I used to make StarCraft maps, and believe me, it took a lot more than four hours, so... I feel like if you're going to let yourself be creative with one of those, like, editors, you do have to give yourself a number of hours to... to really try to make something that's fun or... or not even necessarily different, but fun, right? But yeah, like, I had a lot of confidence in the Max Payne movie. I was like, Max Payne has a fantastic story. It's... It's, it's like, it could even be, like, considered a generic action game. So, there'll be an excuse for all sorts of action sequences. You can do that slow-mo gun dodging thing, because that was a big thing in the game. And then the movie came out and absolutely blew and had none of those things. <laughs> Just didn't have any of the things that made the game great. And that, And I think that's what bothers me more than anything else, is that there was so much potential there, and they squandered the living crap out of it. Like I said, such, such high hopes for that movie. It still disappoints me to this day. Are they saying there's something behind these? Hmm. Well, this looks like it's going to be a teleporter, which... Oh, Jesus. Every time I go through a teleporter in this game, it's bad. Okay, this isn't a teleporter? What did it do then? Okay, now I'm terrified because now I don't know what I did. But I just walked on that and... It's not doing anything, so that would imply that it triggered something but uh, now I don't know what and that scares me more than anything <laughs> okay these don't open either yet oh is there make it perfect That being s that being said, the Doom movie did have that like first-person shooter sequence that they did, and I mean it was so goofy, but I mean I still thought it was kind of fun, even if it was goofy as shit. <laughs> Uh, you are clearly too tall to go through that door. I do not appreciate you going through the door in that manner. Uh, in my world, we appreciate and obey the laws of physics, and you clearly are not. That is offensive to me. So like I said, but I think after Max Payne didn't work, a game that was so high in story, there's no reason why it shouldn't have succeeded. I think at that point, I was kind of like, I'm never going to see a good movie based on a video game ever, am I? It's just never going to happen. I mean, the Warcraft movie is probably the closest thing I've seen to, like, a good... a good video game movie. 
But even that, I feel like, if it wasn't for the fact that I'm a huge fan of Warcraft and the World of Warcraft series, I don't think I would have liked it as much. Okay, now the doors are open. Fantastic. Like, I just loved... I just love the World of Warcraft lore and the... And I'm, I'm so into the characters and everything. So, like, there were all these little background characters or scenery pieces that I absolutely loved. And, like, it made the movie more exciting for me to watch as a fan. But, like, if I, I try to be objective of it and sit back and, like, think of, like, what would this movie look like to me if I wasn't a fan... And I can guarantee you, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't have liked the movie that much. I would have thought it was mediocre at best. Oh, I understand. It's got a nice little floor effect where it makes it look like I'm knee deep in the in the ground. It's kind of cool. This is what some people might call a flavor win. I can already tell this level is definitely longer than the average Plutonia level so far. Plutonia has been has had a lot of short levels, but this one is just. I've been here for a little while and it's still going, and I'm only at a hundred out of the hundred and like eighty-two enemies, and it's been a lot of like stronger enemies like these guys. Very few of the. Ah. Uh, very few of the whole. You know, throw a bunch of zombie man, man at you kind of deal. Because the most levels have like 132 enemies in it, it's because it's like, oh well, half of them are, are hit scanners, right? Which die like really quickly. But this level's been like, let's see how many Hell Knights and Barons of Hell we can throw at this guy before he hates his life. But I guess it's better than the amount of Arach uh, Arch Files I saw in previous levels, so... And I'm still kind of paranoid there's going to be a bunch that come out of nowhere during this level as well. Given my previous experience with Plutonia so far. So since I am kind of like on the home stretch of Plutonia... It's either I finish it tonight, depending on what the level 29 is like, or I finish it next week at the absolute latest. So does anybody have, like, a, um, a mod request? Like, ooh, hello. Like, do they have, like, a, a mod they might want me to, to play, like, a favorite mod they have that they'd like to see me play? Because Loser Corner, I feel like there was one that you told me about, like... Splatterhouse or Slaughterhouse 3D or something. You want to take a break and work on the BFG? Sounds good to me. Oh dear god. I knew it was going to be bad. I knew it was going to be bad. And I still picked it up and didn't have the BFG out like an idiot. Now I have 11 health. There's Hell Knight still coming out of nowhere here. I can't believe I'm alive. I can't believe they're still coming. Safe to save. Oh, phew. God, that just makes the problem worse. It was Splatterhouse 3D. So, is that just one level, or is that like uh, a whole bunch of levels? I'm assuming that reopens the door. 
Jesus, that was ridiculous. I legitimately cannot believe I'm still alive after that. Is there still stuff coming through? How many of you were in there? Alright, well, I guess I'll try to get out of here now. <laughs> Given that uh, their previous ex my previous experience with this level, I'm actually really surprised an archfile didn't show up at the end there to start resurrecting everything, because that seems to be something they enjoy doing. But yeah, I'm trying to decide, do I want to, like... I remember you talking about Spider House 3D, and it was something I wanted to, uh... There's the arch file. Okay, well, at least he's dead. It is a whole bunch of levels? Okay. Because, yeah, I remember you talking about it. And it was something I wanted to check out. But if it's, like, one level that was, like, ten seconds long, <laughs> and it was just, like, a large, or, like, a slaughter map, I would have needed something else to work with on top of it. Okay, well, if you're not going to auto-aim with that one... Yeah, Jay, I was saying, um, I'm almost done Plutonia here. So if I'm not finished today, I'm definitely going to be finished next Monday. So my question was, are there any wads that anybody, like, w would like to suggest as my next one? And, uh, if so, which one? And I will consider, uh, consider playing it. Um, and, uh, Blues Your Corner suggested Splatterhouse 3D. So if you have one you'd like to see me play, because I think, Jay, you were, you were down for me playing Plutonia, so is there, like, another wad, uh, Simpsons wad? <laughs> Do Simpsons? Is that a mega wad, or is that, like, a one-off level someone made as for the lulls? <laughs> Shoot secret. Oh god, a full game. Man, you guys love uh the one that came in cereal boxes? I don't even know what you're talking about. What do mod came in cereal boxes? I'm intrigued, what what came in the cereal boxes? That sounds like one that, uh... <laughs> parents should have been like, you can't, you can't play this. Alright, I'm missing the secret. What secret am I missing? AVGN did an episode on it. Okay, well maybe I'll look into that. So I've got Splatter House 3D, I've got Simpsons, and I've got that level. <laughs> hey, can I get like 10, 20 seconds of your Doom guy trying to walk? Do you need something for me for that? <laughs> Or are you just like, you know, do do want to see footage of me going back and forth like this? God, I didn't know about that wad that was in a cereal box. Now I gotta look that up. That sounds hilarious. 
Back when uh, shareware was how you had to get your game out there, I guess. <laughs> So there's nothing showing up on my map as a secret. Doesn't look like. So where, so should I just take off probably? Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go. No point just sitting around trying to uh, locate a secret, especially when I'm at this point now where it's like lucky to be that's beneficial to trying to find it other than the fact I want to say I got 100% everything. But footage of me wandering around trying to find something is a uh... Odyssey of Noises? What are these names? So what kind of audio are you looking for then, uh, Loser Corner? Okay. Flavor Wind going on here. Is this going to be like one of those city wads where it's like shit's going to be in the window all the time and... Yeah, no, Loser Corner, like, I, I think I know what you mean in terms of that, but what audio do you need from me for walking? Oh, Jesus Christ, okay, no, just don't go wandering around this level. This is one of those don't wander around or you'll die levels. Well, at least he's fighting a Mancubus. Why are all of you in this city trying to shoot me? Uh... You want audio of him struggling to walk with all his weapons? <laughs> Well, I guess it'd be something like, "Oh God, damn it, son of a! Ugh, why did I do this? I just needed a shotgun. Oh, who thought this was a good idea? Rockets are heavy, and I have a hundred of them. Why? Oh God, damn it! Ugh. Screw it. I'm just taking my pistol." Which is funny, because that means he's taking his pistol as opposed to everything else, simply because he's a pussy. Are my rockets getting sucked into a third dimension? What's going on there? It's not exploding, it's just disappearing. I guess I'll wreck it Ralph is eating the rockets. <laughs> Was he in the rockets? Man, rockets are heavy. So the fact that they're saying that he's carrying a hundred of those son bitches is just crazy all by itself. So forget the other weapons, the immense size of the BFG and the battery packs he's definitely carrying around with that. Just the the fact that they're saying he's carrying a hundred rockets around is nuts all by itself. The fact you're carrying more than like two would be crazy all by itself. Which is why Half-Life, the Half-Life series, for as amazing a series as it is, makes no goddamn sense whatsoever. I don't know how jacked Gordon Freeman is supposed to be, but the crap that that scientist carried around is insane. Yeah, this is an annoying weapon to have to use, but the rocket keeps getting snagged. Uh, 
Did I just get hit by a revenant or a cyber demon? Revenant. Okay. It's gonna be like I feel like I didn't take. I didn't take enough damage for it to be the cyber demon. Eh. Let's see if that kills him. Look at the enemy counter. Got him. <laughs> Got him. the enemy counter. Got him! Okay. Yeah, this is a, a wide open level right <laughs> right off the bat here. Now I feel like I should be able to get behind here because I hear a lot of rumbling. Oh, hello. I feel like they're at least making it look like there's a room back there. Because in a lot of these, like, Jesus. Because in a lot of these, like, city levels, they always, like, make it so that, like, the guys are up in, like, little tiny... Tiny, like, cubbyhole windows that don't have, like, any doorways or rooms behind them, and you're like, Dude. How did you get stuck up there? And I feel like you shouldn't be mad at me, you should be mad at whoever put you in there. So I appreciate the level for trying to at least uh, give these guys a room to stand in behind them. Eh, let me in. Ugh. One second, guys. Okay, so I'm at the point now where I feel like I should start going into some houses. John Romero's head put them there. I'd be pissed, honestly. I don't care. I'd be like, we need to, you know, take care of this in this meddling marine that's messing with our plans. Like, cool, what can I do to help? I'm going to put you in this cubby hole and then shut all the doors behind you so you're stuck there until he's dead. But, like, what if he never... What if, what if he never shows up? Well, that's too damn bad. You're gonna stand there until he's dead. I'll let you know when he's dead. But again, what if he just never comes this way? Do I just stand here? And the answer is yes. Yes, you do. You know, now that I've, like, seen people do a lot of these levels... Okay. Seeing people do a lot of these levels with, like, pistol starts... I actually try to pay attention to see if, like, pistol starting is something, like, a level will, like, legitimately let you do. Or has what it needs to do that. And I'm looking at this level and I'm like, man, can you honestly pistol start this level? But I say that knowing that, like, Decino did it, so... I just had to accept that it's possible, and I just suck. Uh... 
Glenn. I know you're just, like, kind of just out of my range, but I need you to die for me. Okay, I'm running low on bullet ammo, so I shouldn't be using it so liberally, I feel. Gotta be a bit more careful. How am I doing? 75 enemies down? That is an arch file. Hey, Ragnatron, do you want to shoot at me now? No? There we go. You guys uh, work this out on your own. I don't know why I thought I was far enough away to not take splash damage from that, but, you know, here we are. Me being a dingus again. Now, I'm pretty sure the arch file is, like, over to my right. So, I'm just gonna take a shot in the dark here. Okay, good. I got him. Rocketing, that's probably a bad idea. Yeah, that is a very wide open spot with a lot of things that are trying to kill me. Wait, hang on. Am I supposed to jump out that window? Is that... No. No, why would I do that? That just seems silly. That doesn't sound like anything that says, well, okay, where are all you coming from all of a sudden? What is going on here? Like, did I miss something? What made all of you show up all of a sudden? That circle strafe was not as good as I would hope it would be. Ah, uh, oh god, he got me with the one-two shot. I am not having a good time. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Why did I do that? That's not how I did it last time. So why did I do it that way that time? What dumbassery possessed me to do what I just did? Jay, shut up. <laughs> I don't need any of your sass right now. Still stuck. Both of you, quiet. <laughs> it's not like I didn't know what I did was dumb. I'm well aware that it was extremely dumb. I feel like it would have been different if I thought what I did was intelligent somehow. Get out of the way! Okay, I keep finding, like, chain gunners in the cubby holes. Like, on levels like this, it's really irritating, especially if you want to get, like, 100% kills. It's like, did I check all the cubby holes? Do I even know where all the cubby holes are to have checked all of them? Like, so I know, like, there's an imp up there. Two imps, actually. At least this cubby hole actually has like a room behind it they can actually get in. Another Hell Knight. It's just Hell Knight Central. 
Why are there more of you? Why do the creators of this wad love Revenant so much? Like, I get it, they're a fantastic, like, mid-card enemy, but, like, relax. Back to it. All right. So, okay. Good. Ammo. Ammo. Oh. Got another cubby hole. Like, I don't even know if I've explored everything back here, honestly. apparently just a long hallway so I'm just checking this out real quick or sorry not hallway roadway drive-by rocket launching mad skills <laughs> I have been paying attention to all I had tunnel vision on the level I finally beat. Hey man, you're here, that's all that matters. Did I seriously forget there was a cyber demon down there? I think I legitimately forgot there was a cyber demon down there. And uh, pay the price for my forgetfulness pretty quickly. So, is that the level that you made, or is it something different, Yoken Carriage? Or is it a little bit like Mario Maker, like you have to prove your level can be beat before you upload it? Which I think is an ingenious thing for them to have to for them to implement because otherwise there'd be so many people just up, like uploading levels that couldn't be possible. I mean, it was so irritating to me to play like um, my dad used to have these CDs just full of Doom wads. Like I think one was called D Zone, one was like Deathmatch, and there was like. Deathmatch especially had like 7,000 levels on it. And I was very disappointed to find that a whole bunch of like the 7,000 wad one, the maps didn't have exits. Now some of them were deathmatch levels that, so that was fine. Deathmatch levels don't necessarily need to have um don't necessarily have need to have exits on them. But, like, there were, like, legitimate, like, levels that did have exits. And I'm like, why, though? What possible logic would you have for that? Your dad's watching a hunting show, <laughs> and the dogs are freaking out over the turkeys. <laughs> you know, it's always funny to me how some animals can tell what a TV is, and then others just can't. So you'll have, like, people show off their pets that are, like, barking at the TV and everything. Which, in all my years of my family owning dogs, I don't think I ever actually saw it happen with any of mine. They, like, barked at the TV. At least if they knew that the sound was coming out of the TV, there were a couple of instances where they didn't know that's where the sound was coming from. So I guess that's a little bit of a different situation. But, like, the dogs I had, I don't think ever actually, like, barked at the TV. Thinking that the TV was, like, 
anything on the TV was real. However, that was just my experience. But I've seen plenty of videos of people showing off their dogs doing just that, so I know that's something that happens. Okay, okay, no, that is a fence. I can't actually jump out that way. Okay, so what am I missing? Because I'm not positive where I'm... Okay, this way, I'm guessing. Okay, so I was right. This... This was the intent, was to go this way. Okay. Kind of annoyed that he resurrected that thing, but... I mean, in the grand scheme of things. Head now, Yoke and Carrot. Thank you very much for stopping in. I much appreciate it. You have a fantastic evening, and... Hopefully I'll see you later on in the week. Good night, man. Okay, I really gotta do something about that Cyber Demon, though. He is what's being the biggest pain in the ass right now. Now, where did you come from? And why are so many of your rockets homing rockets? Where are any of you coming from? You know, they're like trying to overwhelm me with revenants and demons, and I don't know why they're going with that combination. Ooh, I was trying to get hit by the pillar and I missed. I didn't name that correctly at all. Can I, like, get rid of you? Okay, because I really want to get... <sighs> oh, that wasn't so bad. I really need to get rid of those homing rockets, I feel, before I can do anything about the Cyber Demon. Now, let's see if I can just BFG him out of here. Well, I need to actually, like, hit him with it. That would be helpful. Okay. It actually gave me a little bit more breathing space as I make my way through this level because having that thing shooting at me constantly was making this level probably a lot more treacherous than it needed to be. So where are all these teleporters taking me? Oh, have I seen a red key door yet? I've seen a yellow and, like, a blue, but I don't think I've seen a red yet. So, once again, I'm stuck in that situation where it's like, they gave me a key and now I don't know what the hell to do with it. Okay, so they only make it look like you can jump there, but you can't, in fact, jump there. Ah, <laughs> uh, good old Doom Engine, where you're not actually allowed to jump over things. Okay, I still can't get up there. Okay, let's investigate up here again. Sure. No, no, nothing here that I appear to be missing. Oh, right. Okay, game. Freaking out there. Calm down. Anything here worth getting? No, don't look like it. Load then, and then walk back. So, what did that switch do? Ah. 
Like, I feel like it must have opened something. But what did it open? Okay, so maybe something here? So, maybe this is a strat. Okay, so I could have gotten that long ago, actually. So that's really annoying. <laughs> I could have... I could have gotten that forever ago and just missed it. Be a little less lost and confused right now. Can I get right there? Oh, I totally can. We had to do a diagonal run, but I can get there. There we go. Okay, so I still don't know if I figured out what the red key does, though. Maybe when I open up one of these doors, it'll tell me. Again, throwing a switch and I don't know what it does. One of the more annoying things it could be doing. Okay, so I still need... Oh, I need to figure out what that did. That would be a good place to start. Oh, something's moving around all of a sudden. There. So that's not helpful. God, what am I missing here? Because again, I'd love to know. I'd love to know what that yellow key just did. Okay, so we didn't raise the stairs. Still kind of lost as to what the point of the stairs is. Okay, it sounds like there's something moving around, and maybe it's in here? Were you the Baron I like left up here? We were in a fight with a Rackentron, and I just kind of left instead of. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to ignore you like that. Splash damage for the win? Splash damage for the win! Do we get? Damn right I did. Okay, so what am I... I hate when levels have unintuitive switches. I don't know what you did. I need to know what you did. I'm assuming. Or else I cannot continue. So what did you do? What did you open? What, what, what do? I feel like that's two switches I've thrown now that I have no idea what they ended up doing.
And yet, apparently, I need to figure out what they're doing in order to complete this level. Ugh. Okay. That's a lame secret. There's, like, a cell pack. I mean, I guess I'm glad I don't have the stress of trying to find the secrets for the rest of the level now. I mean, that's nice, but, I mean, I'm still stuck. Oh, oh you open this up. Right. The level's too long. I legitimately forgot <laughs> about that thing. So now I need to, like, get up there? Gotta go, gotta go roof hopping, guys. Ugh. Sweet, one roof hopping. What is any of this doing? Who knows? Who knows why my aim is so terrible? Why can I not shoot at this guy? He's like right in front of me. Well, I hear stuff moving around, so whatever I did. <laughs> it has released some sort of hell. Oh, you bastard. Lost souls are the lowest form of content. Like, come down! What are you what are you hoping to accomplish up there? Seriously, another one of you. Well that lost soul is gonna feel really cool that he took down a caco demon, even though it was mostly me. But what, what lost soul can say that they, they managed to do, do that? Really? More of you. Well, I'm assuming the switches did more than just let the caco demons out, though, so... Anything up there? I can't see anything. So yeah, it must have it must have done something else. Ah, the stairs. Oh, I should have known there would have been arch files. It's her favorite enemy to use. I was actually going to say, like, are they one of those enemies that are immune to splash damage? Oh, I did it. Let me just quickly go see if I... I'm sure there's ammo lying around, so let me just go quickly pick it up. Okay, actually, before I say that... Let me just see. The gateway of hell. I was going to say, it's the last level, which tends to have an ammo dump right at the beginning. So we'll do a safety save just in case I gotta go back. Um. I went through there way too fast. Come here. I should probably be saving my rockets now that I think about it. So that was just a thing to somewhat protect the BFG 9000. I mean, 
They've had a hard on for Arch Files this whole wad, so I shouldn't be surprised. Well, I give him credit. Most level or map 30s just kind of like go, okay, here's the. Uh, Here's the icon of sin. Oh, there is just a uh, cyber demon there. Oh, shot it. Okay, let's load. I did not have any time to just take that in. So I have no idea what I needed to do. Okay. So let's just let's just take a second here and observe the situation. So I'm guessing I really gotta get rid of that cyber demon before I can do anything that even resembles completing this level. Okay. Okay, so I gotta let that come down. Sorry, even in front of the spawn spot, just brilliant. Well, I'm in a situation where I can't seem for the life of me to get a rocket in there. That did not auto aim up at the Revenant. I am upset with myself for thinking that it would. Taco demons and pain elementals are the worst thing to have in front of me when I'm trying to pump rockets into the brain of a of an icon of sin. Okay, so that that went less good for me than it should have. Um, you've got to run out the edge of it to time it. Do I know? That one must have went in. That one probably would have went in had I had actually been aiming straight at it. I am getting just above and just below it, but not in it. <laughs> God damn. Okay, that apparently counted. I don't think I saw one go in there, but it counted.
Yeah, I'm kind of hoping they'll infight as I come up and down. Oh, did I get him? Got it! Woo! Squid gang! Squid gang! Squid gang! Right into your enemy alive? Didn't have to worry about it. The gatekeeper's evil face is splattered all over the place, and its tattered corpse collapses on inverted gate forms and sucks down the shards of the last prototype accelerator, not to mention the few remaining demons. You're done. Hell has gone back to pounding bad dead folks instead of good live ones. Remember to tell your grandkids to put a rocket launcher in your coffin. If you go to hell when you die, you'll need it for some final cleaning up. I think that's a great request it's to lay on your grandkids. Throw a rocket launcher in here, guys. Plutonia. Well, I gotta say, that was a really enjoyable megawad. It had quite a bit of challenge. Squid Gang! Woo! It was quite challenging. It had a lot of unique little spots in it, like the Arch File Maze or the Arch File Towers. They put a Cyber Demon right in front of the Icon of Sin, which is hilarious. Um, a lot of like mid tier enemies instead of like loading it up with like hit scanners, which is something like Doom 2 used to love doing. So, it was a fairly enjoyable wad. I mean, there were still points where it was kind of like I was throwing switches and didn't know where I was supposed to go, which I hate in wads. Um, but, I do think as a sort of final doom, this, this was a very good job. Like, very crisp levels, very well put together levels, very unique, very, very just... Very, very, very... <laughs> I, I gotta say I enjoyed it. As a vanilla wad, it's probably one of the very... Uh, one of the lot better ones that I've played. So, so what do you guys think? How do you, how do you, how do you like Plutonia if you've played it? I'm just gonna go new game to make that shut up. <laughs> so it's not just shotguns going on. <laughs> For it's an annoying like bang 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 in the background. Awesome, you think Plutonia is awesome? You gotta say, like I said, as, as far as vanilla wads go, that was definitely definitely up there. Um Probably even better than uh, Doom 2 in terms of uh, level design and everything. Very crisp, short levels, right? Each level felt like an easily obtainable or, or beatable thing in terms of the length, right? Only those last couple of levels got really long. But for the most part, I never felt like I was doing some crazy grind or really long levels. Like, it was an easy, like... Oh, this one's just a maze of arch files, and this one's just this, and this one's just this, right? So... Uh, I gotta say that was uh, that was a really good, really good wad. So now I gotta think about which ones to do next. So I got Splatter House. I got that one that's in the cereal boxes. Um, what was the other one? I think it was the third one. Oh, Simpsons. <laughs> Joking Carrot wanted me to do The Simpsons. Um, I think I'll do Splatter House uh, 3D next, simply because, uh, Loser, you've been watching me the longest, and you requested that, I think, back when I first started Plutonia. So, um, I think I'll go with that next. So, next Doom Mod Monday, guys, tune in for Splatter House. <laughs> um... Assuming I can get it working. I'm assuming there's nothing really funky with it, so it shouldn't be a problem to get up and running. Well, thank you guys for being here with me as I finished Plutonia and took down that final icon of sin. Uh, Squid Gang. I'm glad the Squid Gang is here and really embracing the Squid Gang thing. I didn't know if people would think it was too silly, but people seem to be with this, so... Squid Gang, 
Um, I'll be back later on in the week, maybe playing more Valheim tomorrow. Um, because I think in terms Tuesday I usually do co-op with my wife, and she's really into this Valheim thing, and I am too. So uh, maybe we'll do that a bit tomorrow. But thanks a lot, so much for guys for watching. Um, just like every week when we do do them on Monday. So thank you. Have a fantastic night, and I will see you guys later on in the week. Good night, guys. Squid Gang. <laughs>